Hello, the purpose of this video is to uh, demonstrate how through the use of inverse, the concept of inverse, we can solve all kinds of equations in algebra. And um, the equations that I wrote here, um, I wrote specifically for a reason to demonstrate um, two things. The first thing is, uh, from a mathematician's perspective, there's really no difference in the method for solving any of these equations, even though the equations themselves look dramatically different from one another. If you look a little closer, you'll see that in each case, um, if I was to evaluate the expressions on the left-hand side, I would put a number in for x, like let's say 3, then I would add 2. 3 plus 2 is 5, and then I would cube that result, 125, and then I would add 1. Clearly we could see that when x is 3, we don't get 5, so x is 3 is not a solution to this equation. But the emphasis here is on the order. When you put a number 3 in, you add 2, then you cube, then you add 1. Put a number 3 in here, you're going to add 2, that's 5, you're going to square it, it's 25, plus 1. So you keep doing the same stuff in the same order, the only difference is instead of cubing, I'm squaring. Here, instead, I'm going to add 2 to x, that's a reciprocal, when I put numbers in for x. Same thing here, absolute value comes between adding 2 and adding 1. Here, taking two-thirds comes between adding two and adding one, and here taking the square root comes between adding two and adding one. So what we're going to do is we're going to um, solve each of these equations and demonstrate how through the concept of inverse, which um, was demonstrated in an earlier video, we can um, solve even these uh, more complex equations. So um, the key is understanding that we are going to reverse the order of operations. So whatever the first thing I do to x, the second thing, the third thing, in order to solve, I'm going to peel back all of these operations to get back down to what x was before we did all this stuff to it. So for example, I start with the inverse of add 1, which is subtract 1 on both sides, and I get x plus 2 cubed equals 4. I did add or subtracted 1 from both sides. The inverse now of Cubing is cube rooting, explained in an earlier video. So the cube root of 4, well, I need a calculator for that. But for now, I will keep writing, because now the inverse of add 2 is subtract 2. And I get cube root of 4 subtract 2, which in a calculator tells me is negative 0.4126. And that's consistent with my graph on Desmos. Now, this equation was just like the last one, except instead of cubing, I'm squaring after I add 2. But I'm going to reverse the order of operations and invert add 1. So the inverse of add 1 is subtract 1, so I do that to both sides and maintain equality. Now the inverse of square is square root. So I take the square root of both sides. And from the last video, remember, uh, we need to remember the absolute value whenever we square root a squared variable expression. Because it could have had positive or negative numbers for all we know. And now we invert the absolute value and invert add 2. In both cases, we subtract 2 from both sides. It gives us two solutions, which are consistent with my graph from Desmos. Once again, we're going to invert add 1, which is subtract 1 from both sides. Now I'm going to invert divide by x plus 2. That's multiply by x plus 2 on both sides. And on the left-hand side, we'll see we divide out to 1. And on the right-hand side, we have 4 times x plus 2. Now here I inverted multiply 4 from both sides, so I divided both sides by 4 so that I could show the third step, invert add 2, which is negative, just subtract 2. And we get x equals negative 1 and 3 quarters, once again consistent with the graph. And this one is uh, um, interesting here because I could have, instead of dividing both sides by 4, I could have distributed the 4 and gotten 4x plus 8 subtracted 8, and then divided by 4, and I would have ended up with the exact same result. Um, but just to be consistent with the pattern, we were always doing um, inverse of add 1, inverse of whatever function we did, finally inverse of um, add 2. Anyway, here again, invert add 1 to subtract 1. Invert absolute value is to consider both positive or negative, depending on the x. And inverse of, of negative is positive. So now we're going to invert add 2. And both equations get two different solutions, which are, of course, consistent with my graph. This is a linear function. It's a little bit, um, you know, like point-slope form. Um, but once again, I'm still going to apply the same principles. I'm going to add, uh, invert add 1, invert multiply by 2 thirds, which is divide by 2 thirds, or multiply by 3 halves. Right here, we can see that 2 thirds times 3 halves 
equals 1. So then we're able to go on to our third step, which is invert add 2, and we're applying the exact same methods, even though this is a linear function, which we supposedly consider to be easier. But it's following the same rules as all the other functions. Invert add 1, invert square root, invert add 2, and check it with the graph. Now, this last bit here is just to demonstrate that not all equations can be solved using the inverse approach. In this case, this quadratic equation, if I tried applying inverse, I could uh, invert add 5, but then how would I be able to invert 4x squared and 8x using inverse operations? The answer is it's not as easy as you think. So instead, we're going to work around that by using the concept of zero product rule. So I need to get this equation, or the expression, sorry, the quadratic, in factored form, and once we have two factors that equal zero, we're going to apply logic. The logic here in this case is if two numbers multiply together and the zero is the product, then one of the two factors had to be zero. So that's the zero product principle. It's logic. It's not inverse. But that gives us two unique equations, both of which can be solved using inverse principles now. So I'll invert, I'll subtract 1, which is add 1. I'll invert, multiply 2, which is divide 2. And that gives me that solution. Here on the left side, I'll invert, add 5, which is subtract 5. Invert, multiply 2, divide 2. And that gives me two solutions, which I could check on a computer. So once again, inverse operations are a great way to solve equations, but not all equations can be solved that way. I like this equation because it gives us the opportunity to explore two methods of solving the same equation. In one case, I can factor the expression on the left and then use the zero product rule and in inverses. And on the right-hand side, I could just go straight the inverse route. So here I inverted subtract 25 and added 25 to both sides. So first to explore the zero product rule then, zero product rule says each of the factors could be zero to solve the equation and then invert add 5, and then invert multiply 3, and we invert subtract 5, invert multiply 3, and we get two solutions, plus or minus 1 and 2 thirds. Over on the left-hand side, we're going to apply the inverse of multiply 9 to get rid of that 9 on the left side, and get x squared equals 25 ninths. I'm going to invert square, which is square root, and that's 5 thirds. And just to be sure, uh, 5 thirds is the square root of 25 ninths. Remember, 5 thirds times 5 thirds does equal 25 ninths. So that works. And then we invert the absolute value, giving us both positive and negative situations. And those solutions are consistent with what we did using the zero product rule. So this demonstrates that we have the zero product principle as one technique. And in some cases, we could use either or and still get the same exact results. So it's best to get good at all the different methods and approaches. And these are just examples of some of the more common uses or approaches. Have a great day.